Hey everyone, welcome back to Northeast Wisconsin Technical College. I'm Matt Schmelzer here with Practical Machinist. Uh, today we're talking about pipe threading. Uh, I got a couple of parts here and a print for a project that our students work on here where we uh, go to our CNC lathe and we single point thread uh, tapered pipe threads. So here's our project right here, the print for that. And on this particular part, we're gonna be uh, cutting some one half inch 14 national pipe tapered threads. Uh, we're gonna go through just a little programming uh, on cutting these threads, a little bit of specifications out of our machinery's handbook. Um, so of course, today we got our machinery's handbook. We got a good calculator with scientific functions and uh, we're gonna need a pipe thread gauge to uh, measure our threads here to determine if they're good or not. So let's go ahead, we'll dig into the book and we'll find our specs to begin with. So to start off with, uh, to find the specifications for our threads, we're gonna go to the machinery's handbook here and get some of the dimensions we're gonna need for our programming of our threads. So right now I'm in our machinery's handbook and I'm looking under the uh, table 1A here. This is our basic dimensions for our national standard tapered pipe threads. Now a couple of dimensions that we're gonna need is one, uh, the length of our threads. So that's this particular dimension here. So that's going to determine uh, the length of the tapered portion of our threads. Another one here is gonna be our maximum diameter, outside pipe diameter for these particular threads. Uh, there's some other specifications here for hand tight and, and uh, fully tightened lengths and diameters and pitch diameters. Uh, those are really nothing we're gonna need at this point. So when I look over at the side of my chart, I'm gonna find my half inch threads here. And then of course it gives us some specifications. The first one being our outside diameter of the pipe. So that is 0 0.840. That's going to be this upper diameter or major diameter of our threads at the top of the tapered portion. And of course the other one here, this L4 dimension, uh, which is the length of our taper. We're gonna skip over to the next chart on the following page. This is 1B. And I'm going to, again, go back to the side of my column here where I find my half inch threads. And of course, I follow that over and my length of my thread, 0.7815. So I'm going to mark those down on the board. And then we're going to look at some uh, other specifications for this. Now, the next thing we're going to need for uh, programming these particular threads is, of course, our single thread depth. Uh, if you saw our last video, we had a formula that we used for determining that. But for pipe threads, it's a little different. We have a chart for that, both for external and internal threads. So since we're looking at external threads, again, I'm gonna go back down to uh, threads per inch on the side of the column. And of course, this is a half inch, 14. And then I'm gonna arrow over to the right, and then you're gonna see we got the height of our pipe threads, the H. Um, that's gonna be uh, basically our thread depth. And we do have a maximum and a minimum thread depth dimension. So I'm gonna take these two numbers and I'm gonna add them together and divide by half and that'll give me the middle or the mean of these two dimensions. So I'm gonna take that value and that's gonna go into our G code for our single thread depth for these threads. So over on the board, I just got a couple of drawings on here that we're gonna go over. Uh, again, I took some of the dimensions out of the machinery's handbook. Again, one was our major diameter, outside diameter of our pipe. And that was 0 0.840 out of that chart. The next was the length of our threads, which was uh, 0.7815. So I placed that on, on here. Now, when we look at tapered threads, uh, in the machinery's handbook, our national pipe threads have a taper amount of three quarters of an inch tapered per foot. So in us to do, for us to do the programming aspect, we needed to take that and convert it into an angle. And I did the math and I determined my angle from our center line to the radius or the taper on one side, I got an angle of 1.788. So from there I did a little bit of math and one I determined what my small diameter is at the face of the part. So I did the math and I came up with 0.7912, a little trigonometry, I figured that out. And now when we go to do our threading, we're gonna be starting off the face of the part. So again, we wanna match that taper, that three-quarter taper per foot, or that 1.788 degrees. So I determined I'm going to be starting off the face of the part with my threading tool, 200 thousandths. So again, I did the math to figure out that my start diameter off the face of the part 
it's going to be 0 0.7788. So just kind of where I got those numbers from, going over to the other side here, I drew up my triangle and I placed my straight leg distance, again that was the length of the thread, 0 0.7815, plus my 200 thousandths. I placed my angle in there and I used the uh, trigonomic function, the tangent of my angle times the length of my thread plus the 200 thousandths and I got my taper difference here of 0 0.0306. Now, if you saw our last video, we went over the two-line G76 command for a multiple repetitive threading cycle, and uh, there was an R value that determined the difference from the start to the end taper amount for threading. So since we're going to be cutting tapers, we're going to need that value to place in that G76 line. We'll go over that next. So I just want to go over some of the specifications for our threads uh, one more time. Again, out of the machinery's handbook, we got the outside of our pipe or our major diameter, that is 0.84. That is at the top side of the taper of our threads. Again, our taper per foot, three quarters of an inch. The lead of our thread, again, I take one divided by the threads per inch on a single lead thread. That's going to uh, traverse into our feed rate, which is 0 0.0714. And then our single thread depth. Again, this came out of that second chart in our machinery's handbook. It had an upper and a lower limit. Uh, for programming sake, I'm going to shoot for the middle, so I added them, divided by two, I got 0 0.054. And then our radial difference from start to finish. Uh, that was, again, the length of our thread plus our 200 thousandths that were starting off the face of the, of the uh, part with our threading tool. I got 0 0.0306. So I'll flip the board around and I'll place all these values into our can cycle just to overview that for you. So here I got our two line G76 can cycle. We're running this on a Fanuc 21T uh, control. Uh, if you didn't see our last video, go ahead and review that. Uh, we, we went over in depth on our uh, G76 command. I'll go through it one more time with you. G76, the first line of the code. Our P letter address, again, broken up into two digits, a total of six. Number of finish cuts, I'm going to do one finish cut. Uh, number of leads for gradual pullout at the end of the thread, I'm going to do two, so two, zero. And of course the angle of our thread, six, zero, 60 degrees. Minimal cut depth, again as this gets deeper and deeper into the threads, it's progress progressively getting lighter and lighter. I want a minimal uh, depth of cut of four thousandths. And then finish amount, so it's going to take a multiple passes and then one finish pass. I went with two thousandths for a uh, finish amount for that final finish pass. Uh, over on our second line, G76, this is our last pass. Now from this I took our outside diameter of our pipe, or our major diameter, a .84, and then I subtracted two times the single thread depth, which is 54 thousandths, so I got .732. The end of our threads in the Z axis. Um, we went through, uh, we had our total length of our thread from the machinery's handbook, that was 0.7815. And then I added 100 thousandths. My, the width of my tool is, is 200 thousandths, so I want to go half the distance past that of my threading tool. My reference edge is going to be the left side of my threading insert. And then here we have our radial difference from start to end. Uh, this, again, it's a negative value because it's based off of the outside diameter of the pipe or the large diameter. So that's going to be, of course, a negative value because it tapers down towards the small diameter. This would be the opposite for an internal thread. So we got negative 0 0.0306 for our radial difference from start to end. And then we have our single thread depth. Again, there's no decimal in this line, so it is a P letter address. 0540, four digits, no decimal. And then our first pass depth. Again, we took our single thread depth divided by the square root of the number of passes. We're going to take eight passes at this, so I got 19 and 1 tenth, but again, no decimal in this with four digits, so that's a Q0191. That'll take eight passes through there. And then, of course, now our uh, lead of our thread or our feed rate, that's going to be 0 0.0714. So we'll take this information, I'll put it into the code, and we'll go over the G code.
So here I have our G-code for just our uh, threading portion of the program. We'll go through it line by line, uh, starting off with our program number. Uh, next line, setting our max spindle speed. Again, in our particular machines, we're using a G92 to specify a maximum spindle speed of 1500 RPM. Uh, I send this thing rapid traverse to a secondary reference point, uh, and then uh, do, uh, we do a tool change. I'm using tool three, this is our 60 degree threading tool. I go ahead and get the spindle running at 1000 RPM, uh, clockwise direction, and then I move over to my start point or my uh, reference position for my threading. So again, my X, I went to a one inch diameter. This needs to be well above the thread diameter because every time it makes a pass through, it's gonna retract to this diameter before it moves back to the front of the part to take another pass. So I went to just X one inch well above my 0.84 dimension, which is the outside of my threads. And then again, we're starting at Z.2. Uh, we did all our taper calculations based off of that Z point for the start of the thread. That's going to give the machine well over two to three times the lead uh, to get started and synchronized for our threading. And then I turn the coolant down. And then we have our G76 command. So again, starting off with our P letter address, our minimal cut depth, our finish amount, and then our next line, end of cut in the X diameter, end of cut in the Z, our uh, taper amount, again, negative value, it's based off of the uh, large diameter of the thread. Our single thread depth, again, no decimal point. Our first pass depth with no decimal point. And then the lead of our thread or our feed rate. And it's going to go through and take eight passes plus a finish pass to finish those threads out. When I'm all done, I just send it back to my reference point and end a program. We're going to get this program loaded in the machine and we'll make some threads. So I have our uh, part loaded in the machine. Now I went through uh, already and we've already cut our tapered portion and our, uh, our threaded diameter we have to size and it's already cut and it's basically just ready for threads to be cut. Got the program loaded in the machine. We're gonna go ahead and hit cycle start and we'll cut our threads. So we have our threads cut on our part. The final thing is to check it to the gauge. Now this is a special gauge. Of course, it's made for tapered threads. So this is a half inch 14 national pipe taper gauge. So one thing we have to make sure that we uh, screw it onto the part in the right direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this on the part. We're gonna get this started and I'll run it up until it's hand tight. Now what we're looking for is the threads to be flush with the face of the gauge and our tolerance zone is either plus or minus one thread from the face of the gauge. So you can see we're pretty much right at the face of the part. So this is, I'm gonna consider this a good thread. So that brings us to the end, single point thread, uh, tapered pipe threads. Uh, if you get any questions or comments, drop them below, or any other uh, tips or tricks for cutting tapered pipe threads. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you next time.